How would you describe what's happening right now? So what I'm thinking about doing is a series on how to evaluate or underwrite real estate deals. Um, I think this is the single greatest skill you can have in the current real estate market. There's a lot of dry powder and cash getting ready to jump into the market and you have to know how to calculate and evaluate investments, especially if you're an agent because many of the cash buyers are going to be investors. You got to speak their language. You got to know how to show them great returns. And if you're a brand new agent, don't let social media fool you. Most real estate agents are hurting right now uh, and are struggling. 37% of real estate agents in the U.S. couldn't afford to pay their office rent in October. So it's no joke. And it's such a turnaround from a year or two ago because we had a big COVID boom where all that demand meant every agent and their mother could make a few bucks in real estate. Then comes the stimmy checks and we print an ungodly amount of money. Inflation inevitably follows. Fed tries to correct, overcorrects, rate hikes because of Fed's actions. Now housing affordability has fallen to its lowest level in, in 10 years. I was looking at some of the articles uh, before I turned this on. Um, a lot of cities in the South hit pretty hard, but nationwide, I think all the markets where you had the biggest increases over COVID are now seeing, you know, knock off those prices and it's like back to pre-pandemic levels. This article says in September 2022, uh, a median income household would have to have, uh, have had to spend a little over 46% of its income to afford a median price home. That's a 14% spike from September 2021. Uh, so this is happening all over the country. I don't think it's going to be like a crash or anything like that. I think we're just going to bounce off of some of those highs, especially in those cities where accelerated super fast. We got home values went like this and now affordability is going like that. Values aren't going to crash along with affordability, but they're going to, they're going to plateau and, and taper off. Homes are going to sit in the market a little bit longer, um, but it's by no means the end of the world. But if you're an agent or in the mortgage business, it could be the end of your world if you don't know how to pivot and how to shift uh, your business around. And I got a number of agents who follow me. I get a lot of DMs and messages. I'm making this video, I think, to help you out with your strategy on how to approach this market. And if you're a developer, flipper yourself, I'm going to show you a couple neat things with the spreadsheet that I think you know everybody's spreadsheet should have when you're crunching these numbers. And to be honest, I don't really mind that this market might take out uh, a few agents, truthfully. I think there are far too many real estate agents. And what's really wild is that you know, you've got a lot of new agents jumping into the market because they think it's easy and uh, looking for a career change, maybe additional source of income. Meanwhile, you've got a lot of seasoned agents who've been in the market, know how tough it is right now, they're getting out of the market. So it's just this machine that keeps feeding itself, partly because, you know, it's so easy to get your license, it's a very low barrier to entry, take a 75 hour course and boom, you got your license. I think, um, with this video and a few other videos that I might do after this, if there's an appetite, I want to help people be a little bit more sophisticated. I honestly think the 75-hour pre-licensed course is not enough. I think new agents should have to take 250 hours of, of, of coursework. Um, but skip all that. I'll shoot a couple of videos and I'll tell you how to be a little bit more um, sophisticated, maybe a little nuanced in your approach. And uh, there's a small handful of agents around the country that I... I mentor, I try to be helpful here and there. And I'm telling everybody right now just to focus on investors and focus on investment properties. Um, this is how I got in the market. Right out of high school, I started raising money from private investors to flip houses in uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul market. And then I went to Brazil when I was 21. I was focused on land development deals in the south of Brazil. And I moved to New York in 2014, 15. I didn't get my license until 2000, I think 16, I was 25. And the only reason I got my license is because I wanted better access to deal flow for some of the development deals that I was doing. And so you gotta learn how to crunch these numbers. I probably underwritten, evaluated $2 billion worth of luxury residential development deals. Plus there is the you know multifamily and condominium development stuff. I think in this video, I'm gonna walk through 
ground up development and you know spec homes so buy a piece of dirt buy a land vacant lot you build a house on top of it you sell it on the back end and maybe in the future videos I'll talk a little bit more about the cash flows and waterfalls and preferred interest and and you know cash flow generating type properties uh, but I want to keep it very simple in this video very elementary very rudimentary I'm gonna to talk to you like I'm talking to a sixth grader or myself when I was first getting into this market uh, so let's pop open a and I've got folders upon folders upon folders of, of spreadsheets and reports and so I'm, I'm just gonna to try to find okay here we go this one's pretty simple I've got a lot of tabs here I'll, I'll go into these other tabs at some other point but I, I calculate pro I mean, when I put together a pro forma it's the whole nine I show investors what their potential returns are gonna be I've got an entire construction schedule where we know down to you know the dollar amount how much it costs to build that house and can do graphs and reports but I just want to keep it back of the envelope um, very simple in uh, in this video and talk about how I lay out my spreadsheet first and foremost on the left side here I've got the purchase price I've got the construction budget I've got the finance cost. So what's the cost of money? How much, if you're getting a loan, what are the interest payments going to be? Or if you're raising money from an investor, are you paying them um, 6, 7, 8, 10, 12 percent uh, on, on that money over the course of construction? So here's an amortization schedule. Um, let's say 8 percent over 16 months, uh, 10 grand a month, 160,000 in interest. Over here, I lay out a three selling scenarios on that property a base case scenario meaning if it sells at market value healthy selling price that's what that is a best case scenario meaning hey look we sell for over ask there's a bidding war here's what that number is going to look like and then a worst case scenario meaning things did not go well i really like my worst case to be a real worst case scenario and not just be slightly below the base case um, if i'm an agent or you know, I, I used to have a consulting firm, so I used to do this for builders themselves. Builders would come to me and they would say, look, I'm looking for some dirt. So I would put, find the dirt and put together an entire proposal for them. Or maybe a builder would know a few investment sources and they have the potential land already picked out and they just need help putting together a business plan and a proposal, what to build what's the product to put on top of that lot, what it's gonna sell for on the back end. And so all of this is helpful in getting a very quick decision, investment decision, purchase decision. So uh, I would I recommend following this kind of uh, roadmap. And I'm gonna show you another spreadsheet after this where it's a little bit more robust and, and sophisticated. Um, project cost in this next section here, and then total project profits, okay? Um, let's do uh, another spreadsheet that's a little bit more robust. All right, so let's look at this spreadsheet here. It's got a, a few more lines in it. Gets a little bit more sophisticated. We're not all the way to the peak sophistication yet, but we're getting there. Um, okay, so we've got purchase price here. Over here, now we've broken down in you have to figure this out if you're an agent and you're trying to sell a builder on a vacant lot. What's it cost to build a house, okay? Is it hard cost? Is it 200 bucks a square foot? Is it 300 bucks a square foot? Is it 600 bucks a square foot? Uh, you get up to like the 800 bucks per square foot. It's a little bit more of a very high-end custom home, but at cost, you know, you might be at 250 or 300 bucks a square foot. Again, depends on what market what part of the country that you're in. So you're going to need to figure that out. Let's, I don't know. Uh, yeah, let's do, uh, no, let's do South Carolina. Let's do Charleston, South Carolina. Let's see if there, let's look at vacant lots and land in uh, South Carolina. We've got a three acre lot for sale, 750,000, 
It's got a dock on it. It's been on Zillow for six days, got 952 views, 64 saves. Um, let's play around with this. Let's say, let's use these numbers in my uh, spreadsheet. So let's plug those numbers in. Purchase price is 750000 I just have another tab over here that I like to use and I like to factor in if there's, let's say I'm, I've done a lot of joint venture uh, deals with landowners. And so a good strategy that you can keep in mind is, let's say a piece of dirt is sitting on the market for a long time. The market's a little bit soft, it's slower, someone's trying to sell a lot, they haven't been able to sell that lot, haven't been able to hit that number. You can approach them as a development group and say, look, we think it's easier to sell a piece of dirt if you put a house on it. So you, let's do a joint venture. Let's you contribute the lot, we'll contribute the construction, we'll pay you maybe a down payment on what you want on the land, we'll pay you interest on that land during the construction period, and when the house sells on the back end, we'll get you your land, we'll get you your remainder balance owed, and we'll give you your interest, and we'll give you a piece of the profits. So that's kind of what this table here represents. Um, uh, but we'll save that for another video here, but you can keep that in mind. That's a good strategy for you to use um, if there's a lot of lots on the market, sitting on your market in your, your local neighborhood. And you can merge a landowner with a developer builder and get a deal done that way. Um, so it's 750000 Let's say you're going to build a 3,000 square foot home. We may come back and play with these numbers. And let's say it's 350 bucks a square foot in uh, good old Charleston. It's going to cost you a million uh, fifty thousand to build that house. Okay. So construction, a million fifty land purchase one five. Your Principal amount to be financed total is going to be 1.8 million. Let's say you're raising, for the simplicity's sake, you're raising the entire thing from an investor who wants 8% and they want 50% of the profits on the back end. Okay? Now let's go back and figure out what homes are going for in the neighborhood in. Uh, in the, in the neighboring area, because I have no idea. This house is around here, okay? It's around here. Let's do houses. This house is nearby. Oh my goodness. 10.9 million? Wow, it's on the water. This is a gorgeous property. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably you gotta consider things like wetlands, etc. But oh, right across from it, gorgeous. All right, so we're gonna play with these numbers now. We're gonna play with these numbers a lot. Okay, ten million bucks, seven bed, eight bath, nine thousand square feet. It's also on like seven acres. Are there are there properties three acres? So let's play with these numbers. Let's go instead. Well, I know what we're competing with. Let's say we're gonna build a six thousand square foot house. So we're gonna double that six thousand square feet. We're gonna go over here to our selling scenarios, and we're gonna say. We're going to attempt to get, let's say we're going to attempt to get 5 million as a best case scenario. We're going to think we can get uh, 6 million. Let's go 5995. Worst case scenario, real worst case scenario is, let's say three seven five zero. Okay. Now let's. This is very like similar to potential Hamptons numbers, so I kind of like dealing with these numbers here. 
Um, we are just going to do a 1% legal and tax, commissions 5%, purchase price 750000 Two one interest paid now. We raised the entire lump sum on the acquisition and the construction, so it's about three hundred forty-two thousand now in interest. Now we can see we're going to make out here with one point four at a base case scenario, about a million five in profits. Two four best case scenario, and our break-even number is three hundred eighteen thousand. We're going to fifty percent to the investor. Um, and 50% goes to the developer. Now, I think a developer would love this deal. Uh, a developer would love this deal all day long because they're, if they can find an investor to put up the entire 100% of the purchase and construction for only 8%, great. But, you know, somebody might say they want 12%, in which case that investor is going to walk away with even more. Um, it all it all shapes up. But I, at the end of the day, you really want to get to know the developer that you're working with. You want to get to know two things: how much does it cost for them to build in their local market? Um, if you really get to know them, find out what are they paying on their money? Where are they getting their money from? Are they getting it from a bank? Are they getting it from a buddy who's a hedge fund investor? Are they getting it from a, a pool of money? Are they syndicating the deal? All that's going to be very instrumental and helpful in putting these spreadsheets together. And you can use this same spreadsheet and the same template for not just ground up development or spec homes, but for single family, cash flowing rental properties. You can use the same thing for multifamily, for townhouses or condominium developments. I've used this and I've done very, very complex waterfalls where there are hurdle rates and this investor is getting paid back first. And you know this uh, this lender is in first position, and this landowner is going to get this piece at this point in time, and it gets very very complex. I'll do that in a later video, but I wanted to keep it somewhat simple here. Um, if you want me to keep doing these, or you enjoyed this one, or if there's something specifically you want me to talk about in the next video, shoot me a message, uh, shoot me an email, Noel at NoelRoberts.com. Shoot me a DM, DM on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, Inst uh, Instagram, wherever you saw this, and uh, we'll get some other content uh, out there in the, in the days and weeks to come. So if you don't hear from me, have a happy holidays, everybody. We'll talk to you soon.